Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to all of you. My name is Madhulika Rajahan, mother, author, green energy enthusiast and a certified Lean Six Sigma black belt expert. Through these videos, I would like to take you all to a journey of understanding the concept of lean, famously known as Toyota production system, fathered by Taiichi Ono, a man who dedicated his life to the concept. People often equate lean with the tools that are used to create efficiencies and standardized processes. However, implementing tools represent at the most 20% of the effort in lean transformations. The other 80% of the effort is expended on changing leaders' practices and behaviors, and ultimately their mindset. Senior management has an essential role in establishing conditions that enable that 80% of effort to succeed. They involvement, their involvement includes establishing governance arrangements that cross divisional boundaries, supporting a thorough long-term vision of organizations, value-producing processes, and holding everyone accountable for meeting lean commitments. This is accomplished through regular direct involvement with upper management, set an example, durable lean successes, and an increasingly lean leadership mindset follows. The adoption of lean methodology in an organization calls for a number of radical changes, ranging from the way processes are run to the way people interact. As the driver of a transformation, it is the leader's responsibility to develop an ability to influence the mindset and attitudes that will make changes possible. This becomes practically evident when, for instance, leadership shows dissatisfaction with the speed of transformation or with the volatility of results, normally blaming the team for its lack of engagement and discipline. Then analyzing the root cause of that disappointment, however, many of these leaders are faced with rather difficult and different reality. They are the problem. While processes and work systems have begun to change, they have simply lagged behind and continue to adopt traditional management behaviors. Change, however, is easier said than done. The first question many of them might like to ask is, in what ways should we change? Or what are the characteristics of a lean leader? There is no simple answer to this question. But our experience helping leaders reflect on their roles coupled with the lessons we can draw from the Lean Transformation Framework, can perhaps support our analysis. So let's start by reminding ourselves of the five dimensions of a Lean Transformation. Purpose, processes, leadership and management systems, people development, and mental models. For each of these dimensions, we can identify a number of ideal leadership behaviors that, if adopted, can truly support the Lean Transformation. First is purpose, creating alignment around challenging goals. Lean change requires people to get out of their comfort zone. For this to occur, they must be having a clear purpose for them to work towards. It all starts with the clear definitions of performance gap you want to fill. What we haven't learned is that if you seek moderate improvements that don't go past the company's immediate competitive issues, people will likely believe that doing more of the same will be enough. A true lean transformation is driven by challenging goals, which translate the company's strategic direction into meaningful objectives that motivate people to find different ways of thinking and working. This means creating a shared vision of the future state we want to achieve as an organization. Second, being processes, designing value creation. Good processes tend to generate good results, which means an organization on the lean journey should be strongly focused on designing and supporting processes that actually create value for the customer. This, however, is only possible if leadership knows and understands lean principles and tools, as well as the company's processes. Lean is a business-wide management system of strategic importance for an organization and that every leader must learn its concepts and tools, and beyond that, their connection to customer needs. In this sense, the first and the most critical decision a leader should 
make is to acknowledge with humility his or her need to learn, followed by a commitment to deepen their understanding of a lean management system and its applications across the business. In time, this will allow leadership to spearhead the complete redesign of a company's value streams, eliminating organization silos if they exist and therefore allowing for value to flow towards the customers more quickly and with less waste generated. Management system and leadership styles. Practicing the Gemba attitude. In lean transformation, Management processes need to be redesigned so that they will support value creation. Detecting variation using a PowerPoint presentation during endless meetings in the end of the month, for instance, is totally incompatible with lean. A lean leader acts in a completely different way, interacting with people in their workspace and developing a Gemba attitude. When facing a problem, he or she goes, sees, asks the why and shows respect. There are several lean principles supporting this approach. Hoshin objectives are deployed to work cells and variation is visually identified and dealt with rapidly by teams using a management system. Attitude is indeed the biggest change necessary. Leadership must transform the way they interact with teams. It's neither the traditional do it my way nor the radical anarchical do it your way. Instead, leadership should embrace a follow me style based on asking questions. Developing problem solvers. Problem solving based on the scientific approach is the essence of lean thinking. And developing all members of the team to become problem solvers should be the main task of a lean leader. In a lean environment, the leaders act as a coach who continuously develop the problem-solving skills of his people. One of the most important skills to nurture is, without a doubt, the ability to ask the right questions instead of providing solutions. This process encourages people to think, understand the situation and its underlying causes, establish effective countermeasures and assume responsibility. It goes without saying that a leader too must be able to effectively solve problems. As everything in lean, there is a skill that can only be learned by doing. Solving multiple problems. Simple as well as complex. Operational as well as strategic. And practicing the scientific method. Traditionally, people tend to solve problems by jumping to solutions without having properly analyzed the problem at hand. This is why a lean views the A3 thinking, which effectively supports the development of a PDCA, problem solving skills in leaders. Now we come to the last, which is the mental model, being an example. Fundamentally, lean is about changing mindsets. No sentence holds more truth then everybody in a company behaves the way the leader does. Indeed, people observe and follow actions and not words. This makes it necessary for a leader to change his or her company's mental models through leading by example. Being present at Gemba, asking the right questions and showing interest in the team's work can have a very positive impact on people's behavior and thinking. The opposite, however, is also true. A leader's attitude that is incoherent with the lean principle can have a destructive effect, supporting the idea that all this lean talk is not to be taken seriously. Just to recap what we have said so far, for each of the five dimensions of transformation, a leader should be able to create alignment around challenging goals, commit to learning lean in order to support the design of a solid process, adopt a Gemba attitude based on go and see, ask the wise, and show respect, develop an army of problem solvers, and be an example for the rest of the organization to really change mindsets. As each company is different, each leader should adopt his or her approach to lean to fit the company's needs and circumstances. So, if you are a leader in a company that is trying to progress on its lean journey, I encourage you to reflect on the aspects you and the rest of your readership team needs to work in order to effectively support the transformation you have started.
With this, we come to an end to this edition. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment in the comments section on what you'd like to hear more. Until next time, this is your host, Madhulika Rajahan, signing off. Have a wonderful day ahead.